written. The bottom of the Dark Time Tower's entrance had a pair of Topaz guards blocking the way. Luckily, they moved aside for Stephen without question, knowing him to be Pink Diamond's descendant. The stairs on the inside of the pillar went up and up and up for what seemed like forever, in an endless corkscrew of burning legs and frantic breathing. Finally, when they reached the balcony at the top, the wind whipping by to try and throw him off the edge, Stephen circled around to where the towering archway of the door was. It was barred shut, but just like the guards, it slid sideways to let him in the moment that his hands touched the control panel. Darkness stretched beyond the arch, even the small window near the top blocked off. He couldn't see a single thing inside the sheet of shadow, fearing stepping inside as if it would consume him like a black hole. So he stayed at the entrance, calling into the chamber, Spinel? A tiny, broken voice floated out towards him. S Stephen? He saw a movement in the shadows, and then a shivering pink gem stepped timidly into the light. She had a tear-strained face, torn-up pigtails, and rubbery skin, wearing an almost jester-like outfit. She looked petrified and messy, scratches and bite marks covering her arms, her hair in disarray. Her reddened, watery eyes were wide like the moon, a vivid candy pink that was almost staring through him, disbelief and hope twisting into her features. Are, are you... are you real? Spinel squeaked tearfully. Stephen was shocked, just seeing the horrible state that the little pink gem was in. He managed to nod. All of a sudden, Spinel lunged towards him, crashing into him and knocking them both over while Volleyball jumped out of the way. Her magically stretchy limbs coiled around him fiercely, her blubbering words nearly indecipherable through the sobbing. The only phrases he was really able to catch were, <laughs> I'm so sorry, Stephen, I, I didn't mean to say that about your mom. Please, please, please don't leave me in there again. <laughs> Whoa, it's okay, Spinel. You don't have to apologize, Stephen began, trying to sit up slowly from the floor. Spinel was so tightly attached to him that she was nearly throttling him at this point, but he couldn't bring himself to push her away. He just tried to take shallow breaths. Her arms were looped around him several times like a binding rope. The only reason that they were able to do that without shape-shifting was that elasticity was the little pink gem's power. She could stretch and shrink and wriggle around as much as she wanted. She'd been made to use that to aid in her jester-like role, but right now it was being used to make absolutely sure that Stephen wasn't going anywhere anytime soon. It took almost a solid fifteen minutes to calm Spinel down enough for any sort of proper communication to happen. After her wails of attempted words dropped away, she just cried and cried and cried, trembling and clinging to him like her life depended on it. When that ended, her limbs remained in knotted coils around his whole body, resigning to a quiet, wordless sniffling. Eventually, when he felt like she had enough time to relax, he said, Okay, obviously things aren't going as well as I thought they were, but I can fix it. First you gotta let me go, though. R right, sorry, Spinel croaked. She slowly and gradually unwound her arms from him, scooting away without taking her watery eyes off of him like he'd disappear as she blinked. Stephen stood up, helping her do the same, breathing in and out to try and sort out what to do next. So the diamonds put you in here for punishment, he began. How long have they been doing this? Spinel rubbed her face, mumbling, Since, well, any time I do something bad. Like what? He pressed. Spinel's eyes darted to volleyball, then back to her own pointy feet. I, I don't mean to. It just comes out in conversations. Th there's no way to avoid it. They talk about her so much. It it's ridiculous. They think she was some angel. Volleyball spoke up, wearing a haughty expression. Well, maybe you wouldn't get locked up in there if you didn't talk bad about Pink Diamond. Spinel whirled around, hissing, Maybe I wouldn't talk bad about Pink if she didn't abandon me in a garden for six thousand years. Oh, that was what this was about. Stephen could already see the conflict. How had he missed it before? Of course these gems would need to talk it out before living together. Pink was a delicate subject. The diamonds thought her to be perfect. They were mourning her death and wouldn't hear any negativity about her. But Pink had hurt so many people with her childish actions, being a kid in a position of a monarch, and now those people were afraid to speak up. Volleyball sighed, rolling her eyes like Spinel was being dramatically arrogant. Oh, please, I spent far longer as White Diamond's servant, and you don't see me holding a grudge. Fury lit up in Spinel's eyes, so similar to the expression that she'd worn whenever she first caught sight of Stephen on top of the injector drill. 
You don't even remember any of that volleyball, she shot back, mocking the nickname with exaggerated quotation marks. I was awake for every second, believing that she would come back for me. She is a lying, manipulative, irresponsible bitch. How dare you, Volleyball gasped. You used to be her best friend. Why are you saying such things about her? Stop! Stephen wedged himself in between the two gems, pushing them apart. No, no arguing. This isn't helping. He shoved down the warmth that he felt in his gem, knowing that it was about to activate if things got worse. He could fix his gem's problems later. He needed to get this confusing tangle straightened out first. He wasn't as important as this crippled family was. Volleyball, you're still in denial because you don't have any memory of Pink other than before she was toxic. This isn't your fault, but you need to stop blaming Spinel for feeling the way that she feels, Stephen said, pointing to her. He continued with Spinel before she could speak. And Spinel, you know fully well what she was like. You have every right to be upset. It's just that you're surrounded by people who don't know about her. This isn't your fault either. He then threw his hands up into the air. And the diamonds still have literal rose-tinted glasses on, and I bet they're not even listening to Spinel whenever she tries to explain to them what she did. And then they disregard her issues because Pink would never do such a thing. And then they make it worse. He stopped abruptly like he'd run out of rails. The diamonds are the ones in control here. They need to know that they can't do this to you, Spinel. He gestured to the empty dark time tower. This is cruelty, especially for you. This would be like purposely making a soldier listen to gunshots just for the sake of triggering them. He stopped again, this time glaring at nothing. Anger boiled inside of him as he processed what was happening. I'm gonna have a nice long talk with the diamonds about this, Stephen growled darkly, turning and beginning to march down the spiraling stairs of the tower, his thoughts a storming mess. Wait! Spinel yelped. Wait, no! He didn't listen to her at first. He was too caught up in the fuming emotions that were overtaking him now. How dare they do that to her? How did he not see this coming? Stephen, wait! Spinel leaped over his head, holding her arms out to block him. She chuckled nervously and said, It's fine! I'm fine! L look, I'm already laughing about it! <laughs> she began to bounce up and down with a forced smile stretched over her features, doing a backflip and landing on one finger, holding out her arm in a ta-da gesture. She wheezed. <laughs> so Spinella can spend 6,000 years in a garden, but can't spend two days in a little tower. <laughs> I was being so childish, wasn't I? <laughs> I, was, I was blubbering like an idiot back there. <laughs> did, 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 you, did you see the look on my, on my face? Stephen didn't laugh. Neither did Volleyball, who still seemed deep in thought. Look, I'm perfectly happy, Spinell insisted, springing back to an upright position and doing a little dance as if that would hide what she had been crying about a few minutes ago. Stephen just gently pushed past her, shaking his head and saying, That's not working, you know. I might be half diamond, but I'm not half stupid. She was getting more frantic now. I it's not that big of a deal. You, you don't have to bother the diamonds about it. Please don't. She was almost begging him at this point. What? Of course I do. Stephen blinked down at her. Do you want this to happen again? No, Spinell admitted. But they won't listen to you. Trust me, I tried already. I'll just get in more trouble. You might too. It's not that big of a deal. I mean, who cares about Spinell anyway? It's not like that'll affect anybody important. Spinell was fluttering around him as he marched down the stairs, trying to ignore her. Volleyball was right. Six thousand years isn't that long. No reason to get the diamonds all riled up. Spinell, just stop! Stephen burst out, spinning around of a stomp. She snapped her mouth shut, silenced. He could feel the flushing pink glow showing on his face. He held his breath, trying to shove off his gem shine again. It powered down reluctantly, bottling itself away for later. He had to solve this. This is unacceptable treatment from them. I didn't send you here so they could make you worse. I'm talking to the diamonds about this, and that's final, Stephen said firmly, lifting his chin challengingly. Neither Volleyball nor Spinel tried to stop him. So Stephen continued down the spiraling staircase, with the two pink gems following behind him, fidgeting and afraid. Another problem to fix.